there's this mysterious thing. This thing that is a lot more than it appears to be. This thing that ties humans to the rhythms of nature. That is power. That is hidden. That isn't talked about. This thing is menstruation. Menstruation is something that makes a lot of us quite uncomfortable and, and awkward when it gets brought up. Even though at this very moment and on any given day, there are over 800 million adolescent girls and women worldwide bleeding, menstruating every day. Yet, it is still something that makes us uncomfortable and that is silence and that it goes unspoken. And this makes no sense. So we're gonna talk about it today and we're gonna begin to see the true significance that it holds. Let's start with the word itself, men. Menstruation, <laughs> it's pretty deceiving, right? The word men actually derives from the Latin word mensis, which means to measure month and moon, which makes a lot of sense when you think about how humans gain their understanding of time and measurement, because we got that through observing the moon and its cycles, but how did we get to that? Through observing women, because a woman's menstrual cycle is the moon cycle. Let me show you. Let's look at the cycles of the moon. We're all very familiar with the moon, right? So it goes from a new moon, it's darkening, and then it starts to wax, which means it gains light, and then it goes to the full moon at the fullest of its light, and then it wanes, it darkens, and it goes back to the new moon. Let's apply our menstrual cycle to this and see how it's tied in. First, we have the menstrual phase, where we bleed and our uterine linings shed. That co-lines with the dark moon. And then it goes to our repair phase, where our uterine linings build up their nutrients again, and that co-lines with the, way, the waxing of the moon, getting lighter. And then to our ovulation, where our egg is released, the egg that all of you guys went for, and that co-lines with the full moon, the brightest of its light. And then if that egg isn't fertilized, it goes to our premenstrual phase, which is where we shed all of that potential light and get ready to bleed, and that co-aligns with the darkening. The menstrual cycle is a lot more than just the biological aspects of it. It's a spiritual and emotional cycle. And we can't deny this, the stereotype of menstruating woman is this moody, hysterical, sensitive person, and that's true. But there's cycles and rhythms behind those emotions, and we can look at that through the help of seasons. So when we bleed our new moon, we can see it like winter. It's our dark, still phase of reflection. And then we go, oops, sorry. We go to spring, where we, it's our repair phase. All the nutrients are building up again and we're gaining energy. And then to summer, our full moon, our ovulation, where everything's ready to go. And then to our autumn, where we begin to shed the darkening of the moon, to our premenstrual phase. Now this is a phase that's very challenging for a lot of women, including myself. Our minds can become sticky like peanut butter, just critical and negative about ourselves and about everybody around us. And if pressure's on to remain in the outside world, tending to our everyday needs like everyone expects us to, we can become even more irritated and irritable. And some women even get depressed. And then we go back to our winter, where we have no choice but to bleed and to let go of that entire cycle and prepare for the new one to come. Not just women are affected by these cycles, the entire planet is. One of my favorite examples is plants. So what happens to plants is that when the moon is waxing, gaining light, it, all the sap and the nutrients of the plant focus on their upward growth and reach up. But when the moon is waning, all the sap and the energy of the plants focus their energy on the grounding and on the rooting. Now, if we look at this, if we just look at all these cycles together, we can see that nature has designed this perfect cycle of birth, death, and rebirth, of reaching and then grounding, of gathering and then letting go, of lightness and then darkness. And our blood, a woman's menstrual cycle, reminds us that we are a part of that. Ancient and traditional societies recognized this power and utilized it. An example is the Cherokee tribe from North America. The Cherokee tribe saw a menstruating woman to be at the height of her powers. 
her mind focusing on another plane. So any dreams, realizations, thoughts, or emotions these women would have would be shared with the entire tribe once they were done reading so that the whole community could grow in wisdom and in foresight. And many traditions across the world had puberty rituals for these girls, where the girls would go through series after series of hard ceremonies to measure their physical and emotional strength and to measure their character. This here is an Apache ceremony from New Mexico, where at the end of it all, the girls are doused in pollen to honor the fertility they bring to the tribe. Sadly, a lot of these cultures were colonized, and a lot of their traditions suppressed. They're still going on today. These traditions still happen, but they're extremely marginalized. And in Europe, a lot of these women practicing these traditions and going through these rituals were called witches and were burned at the stake. And along with them, a lot of the fundamental knowledge. So, Where does that leave us? That leaves us in this place of forgetfulness where we have alienated ourselves from our own cycles and in turn from the cycles and the rhythms around us. Where we work against the natural rhythms of nature as opposed to with them. Majority of women today don't like their periods. They see it as something to deal with, a burden, a weakness. And lots of rites of passages today for our girls are superficial and compared to that of the past. Our first kiss, our first bra, our first tampon, how many likes we get on a sexualized Instagram photo. What do these things measure for our girls? Where's the strength and the resilience and the character just replaced with insecurity, doubt, belittling, and shame? So, what can we do? We can begin to hold ceremonies for our girls. When I first got my period, I was 12 years old at the time, and the second my first blood left my uterus, it was honored. I was born into a life full of women. So my mother took me through a Filipino tradition, where we stood on the top of the stairs, <laughs> cotton ball under my head to signify purity, flowers in my hand to symbolize fertility, three steps in front of me to symbolize the three stages of womanhood. First being girlhood, second motherhood, and third grandmotherhood. My family stood at the bottom, and they looked up at me and they said, jump. And so I jumped and I landed just fine. And I remember feeling proud and strong and beautiful. But it wasn't long before I realized that not everyone experienced something like this. And a lot of my friends at the time had pretty uneventful first bloods and some even traumatic. So I myself began to whisper about my blood. And that whisper turned into embarrassment, which turned into shame. And then I asked, is this it? Is this menstrual cycle really just pain and annoyance and frustration? Is that all? Is everything that a woman goes through for most of her life and that made the lives of every human being possible, is it really just pain? And the answer is no, it is so much more. Like we talked about with the cycles, menstruation is a biological blueprint that ties humans to the rhythms of nature. We've looked at the moon, the plants, the tides, that is in us. So what can we do? We can remember. We can begin to teach each other. I cultivated a curriculum for middle school girls this, during my project, and I got the chance to teach it this semester. I was Ivo Gabriel. <laughs> and it was so much fun. These girls were together and we would reflect all the time collectively and individually. We would teach and talk about a lot of the things we're talking about right now. And by the end of it, we were saying, these girls were writing in their journals, I now feel like my period pushes me forward rather than holds me back. I feel like I'm more in touch with myself and the things around me. I'm more in touch with the girls in my class. But sadly, a lot of sex ed doesn't do this. They just skim over menstruation very quickly and focus on the biological aspect, not the totality of the experience that it is. And what does that do? How do we expect and tell our girls 
to be empowered women out there in the world when we don't even teach them to be empowered and confident in the very functions that make them women? And how do we expect boys and tell our boys, respect women, when we don't even help them understand what we go through for most of our lives? And this is where we need to change. We need to begin to share and teach each other. I did a workshop with men as well, ranging from ages 14 to 45, and they were all sitting there so curious and had so many questions. But what was cool was that the conversation shifted into manhood and what they experience as men, the things they face, what they go through. And I was sitting there learning so much whilst they were learning so much. And it made me realize just how silenced all of our processes are and just how much empathy and understanding can come from sharing each other's experiences. So we need to begin to share and lift these unnecessary veils because we could live in a world where we are taught to bleed with pride. We could live in a world where empathy and understanding exists between genders. In a world where we recognize that the cycles within us are the same cycles around us. In a world where we celebrate the only blood that bleeds without violence. In a world where we talk. So talk. Talk to your daughters. Talk to your sisters, to your mothers, to your brothers, fathers, friends. Talk to each other and help each other feel confident enough to share what we go through. It's time to reclaim our cycles and remember the significance. Period.